The column hall at the Fernand Núñez Palace is a room mainly represented by four fluted shafts and Corinthian capital columns, with no structural function and which are rhythmically repeated, offering a classicist style static ornament program. This room, known as the sedan chair room by the 19th century chronicles, boasted a magnificent gilded wooden sedan chair, crowned with the imperial crown, embellished by paintings, beaters, straps, arms, and two large lanterns. In this room, which has direct access to the loggia and a covered gallery, we will find, closer to the imperial style console table, a 17th century painting by the French school, representing Jacob and Rachel at the Levant's well along with the herds. This picture is a deposit from the National Museum of Prado and it's been at the Fernand Núñez Palace since 1972. Two other paintings beside the hall, Carlos José Gutiérrez de los Ríos, sixth Count of Fernand Núñez and his wife, María Esclavitud Sarmiento, parents to the first Duke of Fernand Núñez, he who Goya portrayed in 1903. Charles the fourth style footstools from the 18th century, Louis the fourteenth style armchairs, a long case clock signed by Stephen Rimbaud, and a glass bronze imperial style chandelier, as well as a sculptural figure entitled The Tamer, carried out by Eugène Marioton in the 1900, complete this singular space's decoration. The council table is a decorative table, high and narrow, attached to the wall, used for holding clocks, candle holders or small porcelain figures. Many times the piece matches a mirror. This furniture's origin goes back to the 17th century in Italy, from where it will spread all over Europe. The French imperial style console table, made as of 1815, was acquired in April 1971. Imperial style represents a late neoclassicism phase, originated in France between 1804 and 1815, and it's named after the imposed taste by Napoleon Bonaparte, especially as a demonstration of his military victories. From 1815, this style will be adopted by other European countries. Gonzalo Fernández de la Mora, Minister for Public Works between 1971 and 1973, will be the one acquiring this piece to the Benito Torrijos auction, placed at Rivera de Curtidores Street. Its destination will be the Column Hall at the Fernán Núñez Palace, where it will replace a former console table exhibited there from the 20th century 40s. Guinea and mahogany plated with a white marble cover, the piece combines different gilded carved elements imitating bronze. It rests on six feet, four at the front and two backwards, starting with Egyptian bust over claw finished pilaster styles. Its waist moves gently ahead, traversed by a golden metal palmite band, interrupted only in the middle by a putis seen with a flowers garland enclosed additionally within a drum. At the upper part, band golden leaves mouldings are glimpsed. The cultural volunteering program, restoration of gilded pieces from the Fernand Núñez Palace's movable assets, starts on November the 25th, 2016. Developed by the Fundación de los Ferrocarriles Españoles, its main aim comprises the conservation and restoration of the palace's historical artistic heritage, intending by this to restore the splendor for which the building was known during the 19th century. For its completion, a team of 16 professionals from different action areas was made, such as conservators, restorers, documentalists and art historians, who separately, freely and liberally contribute actively towards these aims' achievement. Three hours a day per week have enabled within these four years the recovery of more than 30 collections pieces. 
The workshop's activity, oriented at the beginning to the gilded pieces recovery, has been widened to wood and upholstery pieces, furthermore introducing other materials such as plaster reliefs, blowing bronze sculptures, ceramic biscuit figures and even stone pieces, particularly marble. Intervention on each collection's piece begins with a comprehensive analysis, considering documentary sources and historical background, not only cataloging cards and pictures from the piece in former times, but also analyzes the former interventions and current condition. The collected data from this analysis comprises the base for the restoration report, table card format, which includes relevant data from the current conservation condition and the intervention proposal, provided this means to act further than preventive conservation. Accomplished interventions during this program's implementation respect the international recommendations from the International Council of Museums Icons Code of Ethics to the 1987 Charter of Conservation and Restoration, as well as concerning restoration processes, the principles of minimal intervention and maximum reversibility or retreatability. The French imperial style console table was damaged mainly from plate loses at the waist corners, dirt deposits in between the palmite bands metal details, and gilt loses within the flowers garlands and putti. It can also be observed some legs sustain discoloration, too close or zoomorphic details, detachment from the inner front legs and a volumetric gap at the back of one of the legs joint area with the claw, due probably to incorrect furniture movements. Stucco and gilt loses were observed in the zoomorphic pieces and the Egyptian details presented gold and clay base loses with some detached areas glimpsing the wood-carved base. Moreover, a silophagia tag was observed in different areas, an already documented episode in former checks and noticeably passivated. Since none of the beetles' output holes is reasoned or dust is not observed at the nearby areas. Considering the horse's size, it follows that the species is not a common woodworm or Anovium punctatum, but a larger one similar to Sextovium rufoviosum or Death Watch. The suggested treatment encompassed the in situ stabilization of areas at raised claws, selective stucco, gilt, and clay based reintegration, as well as new gluing where needed. To this effect, different attempts were made, thereby cleaning the wood parts with several recent organic solvents combination, in various stages intended each to specific dirt. The cleaning of gold leaf application areas was carried out through organic solvents. All the gaps were cleaned by means of hardness solvents in order to remove greasy soiling and the original polychrome layers were set with protein animal adhesives, totally suitable with the original base. Layer loses were afterwards reintegrated. Finally, after the stucco was leveled, the traditional gilt process with 22 correct gold leaf was completed at some selected points, aiming the restoration towards a discrete partial console sheen recovery. In other parts, like the gilded garlands or the putti area, liquid gold was used in order to achieve a better reintegration, and to finish the process, all the gilded details were protected by means of highly reversible shellac-based varnish. The inner leg saw morphic details had very deficient joints with rusty nails, which led to noticeable increases of metallic pieces volume damaging thus the carved wood. Since this pattern was only observed in these details, they were disassembled and then treated at the workshop. The accomplished treatment was the same as the one carried out in the console table, except for the metallic nails removal via alcohol and the whole ceilings 
by means of epoxy the joint sealant in order to avoid future dirt accumulation. For finishing the gap in one of the console table's leg, a wood carved custom made piece was allocated, following the original grain, glued and fixed by means of epoxy the joint sealant. Finally, the legs, as well as the new piece, were hand rather stained with a mahogany colored water based coloring. Both parts were also hand rather varnished with shellac, with several layers, ending with a low resin concentration final layer. Shellac was also applied by brush to the golden filigree. The action process finishes with maintenance recommendation guidelines which, once enclosed within the report, will avoid future deterioration due to inappropriate handling or cleaning. Within these four operating years, this volunteering program has achieved great results, not only for all members' professionalism but also for the respect towards the historical heritage kept in the building, which refers to the time when it was the Dukes of Fernand Núñez's official residence, extended by Drenfe with a continuity approach as of 1941 constituting one of the most significant 19th century furniture collections.